Hello, YouTube. Um, in one of the previous videos, I had uh, mentioned that I was going to put this de air deflector on the air conditioner, and uh, I had come up with this sort of a thing to mount on the sides of the air conditioner, and then the magnets would hold this thing on. Uh, but the client said, no, uh, too ugly. So I've got to come up with another way, and I've got an experiment. Uh, for my birthday, I got one of these thingies. It's called a 3D doodling pen. Uh, of course, this one's called 3D stereo. I have no clue why. Uh, but uh, all it basically does is take a filament, a line filament uh, of plastic, and then spit it out at a controlled rate so you can build things with it or do artwork. And so I thought I might try my hand at artwork on this air conditioner to make a bracket. So I'm going to uh, make the bracket uh, template out of this, uh, whatever you call it, brass rod. And it's a metal shaping rod, so it'll take a few bends. So I'm going to make it so that it will clip underneath here and then come out and hold the top and then clip maybe here and here to hold the bottom. So it would go on just like a dot. And it'd be temporary, just, I mean, it won't stay on there while I'm traveling. It'll just uh, get to your camp out and, and if you need air conditioning, break this thing out and put the clips on and it'll sit like that. Blow the air up to the top and not just cool the first foot of the camper on the floor. All right, I gotta cut a hole in this. And before I leave the workbench, let's see what I got here. Hole too small. Yeah, the hole is just too small. Okay, time for a fitting. And away we go. Oh, I think I'm going to need to put this one in first. Since it grips the most. And then this one, if I remember correctly, goes like that. And like that. Okay. That was a good test because it wants to fall over either side. So I definitely need another one on the on either end here. Okay, my original plan is exactly what I thought. I gotta make some sort of a bracket wide enough to go in here and set them in. So, kind of like a pegboard that you put at your workbench and then you put that hook in and it holds it. So, I'm gonna make something like that with this. All right, my attempt is to try to make this out of plastic and uh, make it wide, maybe a quarter inch wide. And, uh, and this as well. I think I'm going to go with the smaller one and make two of them and connect them with a little bar across the bottom. If I had a 3D printer, it'd be real nice to just put this in there and program it and put it pop out a really nice one. And uh, it uses this PLA. It came with white, green, and black. Uh, if it doesn't work out, I can always anneal this aluminum that I just picked up and uh, and make it out of that for sure okay i'm including a segment here uh about the 3d doodler because at the time i thought it was a viable tool for making things other than art and i had the idea in my head that i could uh, assimilate something along the lines of the brackets that i had made out of brass and uh, it was a good attempt and I leave it in here because uh, I wanted you to see that uh, it is still possible. I still feel like it, I could make something. The thing about the tool is you really need to practice with it before you get deeply involved in anything crucial because the thing is a bit unwieldy and uh, you have to learn its, its quirks. It likes to uh, come out of the tool at a certain speed and you have to move the tool uh, along at its acceptable speed or it bunches up or it stretches out. 
and uh, the, this one has a variable speed on it, so it's uh, quite possible to achieve the same effect at all those speeds. And I don't have not used it long enough to be able to tell whether or not I, I can recommend doing it fast speed or slow speed. Uh, and there are two different types of plastic, the ABS and, and PLA. Uh, from what I know about ABS, having worked with it in a shop, it's, it's pretty smelly and bringing it to this liquid point uh, might stink the house up. I haven't tried it yet. But the PLA is uh, very easy to work with. The, the tool handles it real well and I have to say one thing about it, uh, little does not go very far at all and what came with it was gone before I knew it. So I ended up buying larger spools and the larger spools come in 2.2 pounds and uh, so they have various different colors and various different manufacturers that make this stuff. So uh, what I'm doing here is laying out a straight line. And what I want to say about that is be sure to let this stuff cool off till it's uh, good and solid before you come back over it again because you'll have different cooling times and the what happened with me I didn't let it cool off and I came right back as you see here and started a second uh, layer and uh, oh there I'm putting the ends on but I started a second layer before it was cooled off and it warped on me towards uh, the end on the left and uh, if I had uh, let the layers cool enough before working it then I wouldn't have had that curve so it's important because the curve was there permanently couldn't get it out of there and I think I mentioned on the video that if I was to heat it up with uh, either a torch or a, a hot iron or a hair dryer or something that would make it malleable again I probably could have gotten the uh, bend out of it but uh, once the stuff is cooled it, it cools really fast uh, it can be worked with a file and uh, and you can file down sharp edges and stuff now you see on the left there's all these little bitty pieces so that's because every time you finish a run and set it down like I did right there uh, it's gonna have waste and you have to make sure you get it cleaned out before you start your next run so you have a lot of these little spots where uh, you're going to spit stuff out to get the thing in the, in the proper flow. So. I would recommend using a wax paper. My first attempt was that I did it with uh, regular paper. I think with a little practice with the uh, 3D Doodler, I could actually make something out of plastic. But I'm not so sure that this one is going to work, and I might have to go to metal clips anyway. That's what I bought the aluminum for. So one thing interesting about this stuff is that if you don't like the shape that you have and you want to file it down you can actually work a file on it I don't know that I'd put the uh, Dremel pull tool on it because it probably just melt the plastic because it's too fast but uh, as I do this I'm getting really tiny filings so if you had a shape that you wanted like let's say I wanted to deburr this back side here so if I go like this within a few strokes the burr is gone so I'm pretty happy with that what I'm not happy with is that whenever you're using a 3d doodler you want to make sure that your first layer is straight and let it harden before you come back with a second one what I made the mistake of is I laid the first row and then I came back with a second one before it was hard and it put this curve in it and I never could straighten it out once this thing is hard you can't straighten it out. I imagine I could put a uh, some sort of a, a heater on it or get it close to a flame or something and, and warm this up and then push it over. But uh, since it clips on, I'm, I'm not too dissatisfied with it. It just it doesn't clip on and, and, and hold the way that I wanted it to. So I'm going to tweak with it for a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't call it a success. I wouldn't call it a total failure uh, because you can work with it once it's done. But for the 3D Doodler making something other than art, it's very possible to make something that, that you can't buy. 
and this stuff is very strong and then it's flexible at the same time I didn't think that this part here would be held on to this but when I went over it the the layering uh, actually has a good grip uh, you, you couldn't pull this apart if you wanted to it's like it's actually part of the original plastic so I'm real happy with the way that the PLA plastic uh, functions in this manner and uh, and I might try some more things with it all right here's something interesting I just uh, accidentally dropped this while filing it and I stepped on it <laughs> trying to get out of the way and this piece right here broke and is ready to tear off before tearing it off I'm positive that I can come back with the 3d doodler and patch this and bring it back to strength or take it off and actually make a whole new branch right here so uh, the experiments I tried with uh, plastic and stuff that that's just too difficult so got myself a piece of aluminum and uh, it's about two and a half feet long and I think if it will bend and not break if it'll break then I'll have to anneal it but if I put it under there and allow it'll uh, come out and go down and cradle the air conditioning deflector okay this is a pair of square pliers and uh, belong to my dad I don't know how old they are but they're designed to hold something perfectly square and plus this is a very strong cutter right here that that will nip away at just about anything and so I'm gonna use these like a vise since it holds it square I should be able to bend this material in a very tight angle which is what I'm after I hope I do not have to renew it. So far, so good. So that part will slip down on the inside. And uh, then this will go across the top of the air conditioner and then it will come down. So I got to go measure this on the unit. So I presume right about there. If you slip it in, then it comes down. It's actually sitting on it. So now I need to crease it right here so that it will come down to cradle and then come up this way. So let's go see if we can bend that down right about there want to bend it at the edge not where it starts so I'm just gonna pencil it right there I wish I had two of these they hang on great, but I can already see it's got an angle to the bend, which I'm not liking. So, let's go measure that now. Okay, it's way too long to do any good in the camper uh, because I can't point it down and the floor's in the way. So, I'm going to shorten this up. And uh, after it comes out, then it goes down for about that much. And then it's going to bend out for about that much. So, I think that'll, that'll work. It's close. Let's see if this thing will snip it. Look at that. I don't have to get my Dremel out. Nice. A little bit of an edge on there, but I'll file that off. Now let's go see how it fits. Okay, there's my shorter piece. And we'll see how this sits right there. It wants to lift up if it's going to come out. So I want it to cradle on this first lip right here. So I'll just pencil that. That's legible.
We gotta bring that up some more. Almost coupling back on itself. further and I'm not gonna be able to put it up oh look at that that's about what I'm after right there totally adjustable because the, the aluminum doesn't appear to be in any kind of stress right now so if I have to come back a little bit I can so that's the angle I'm after now I need to go make another one just like it okay as I'm speeding through this segment here uh, making a duplicate I wanted to let you know that the Aluminum, being extruded aluminum, made it very malleable. And uh, if I had to bend it more and a few more times back and forth, it probably would break. I didn't feel it raise in temperature or anything, so I know it was good to go. So I'm real happy with the way this stuff was workable and, uh, and it turned out exactly how I hoped it would turn out. First trial fit. Here we go. It's anybody's bet, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, would you look at that? Okay, that's the finished product. The angle is still too tight because it's going to blow it up on the bed when it comes out here. So, But this is being flexible aluminum. I can press it down easily like this and force it out. But I'm going to stick with this rather than the thought I had in the middle of doing this was I have this uh, tape distributor. I've had this for many years and uh, this tape could easily go on the side here when I had it the other way around. When I had it like this and a minute ago it's stuck in there by itself and I thought wow that's a clean edge right there so I could just tape it. And that tape would hold it on but then I started thinking about how much more permanent it is that it would be on there and that the tape would eventually discolor and the glue in the heat I get so goopy goppy from dust and everything it would it would make the edge of this ugly so I'm gonna stick with this temporary uh, fix here because it just cradles in there and it just sits in there as few times as we'd ever use this it's nice to have when you need it. So, that's the best that I can do for this little camper. Um, out of options, other than putting it in the wall by the door, which is actually not an option. Because these walls are made of um, sheets of styrofoam and metal sandwiched together. And they act like a drum. So, this is actually the quietest place for this thing right here and i um, happy with it being right here so if this works well then this is a win-win situation for the few times that I'll ever use it uh, if you've got the camper where the air conditioner is not at this bed because this is the whole reason that I did this so you see this foam pad here this is where this bed ends and the air conditioner began so it came out the wall and took up that and it's six and a half feet from side to side approximately which works for me but that takes out another eight inches and the only way that I could sleep would be cradled or in the middle of the night uh, probably push the air conditioner out if I sleep restlessly so this is a good spot for an air conditioner right here but that would mean that the door would no longer be able to open all the way to the side it would only open straight out I would have to put some sort of a stopper to keep the door from slamming into the air conditioner all the time and uh, then that would that would mean it would take up this part of this bench right here and that bench is actually part of this side with the bed so as you see this this is a bed area here and dining table area this is the end of the air conditioning series thank you so much for watching Take care.